Hello and welcome to another video of Coin Crunch India. Today we have with us Arthur's, um, who is the co-founder of Cycle. And the most interesting part about Cycle is that because I am a content creator, we at Coin Crunch uh, produce content. And uh, why it is so fascinating for us is that now for creating the content that we do, and people like me, other content creators. Uh, we can get rewarded in Bitcoin, in BTC, and Cycle is uh, making it happen. So in this interview, we are going to talk to the co-founder of Cycle Arthur's uh, about how this is happening, why did they choose Bitcoin, and what can we look forward to in the coming year, in 2022, um, with regards to Cycle. Uh, thank you so much, Arthur's, for joining. Uh, how are you doing? All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me. That's uh, that's awesome. It's been a it's been a busy day six, around 6 p.m. here. Um, oh. Yeah, and just uh, it's it gives me a positive kind of goosebumps uh, hearing how excited you are about like creating content and uh, and er earning BTC from that. And uh, yeah, I, just yeah, go ahead. I have always thought about this. I've always thought about why 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 isn't there a content platform with just rewards in bitcoin because we've had a couple of other platforms which reward in cryptocurrencies but nothing on bitcoin in the in the recent past so i am personally very excited but before we get into cycle i would love to know your story as well um could you just give us more information about yourself your background and how did you start cycle like how did you come to this idea yeah, so my background, I would say, is uh, rather unique because after having studied two, two months as a, at a computer science, for, like studying computer sciences, I dropped out of the university and then for six oh. years I pursued a uh, career of a professional online poker player. And then <laughs> at some point <laughs> I felt that uh, it's not giving me any kind of meaningful purpose and then I started to learn programming. And that's what I did for okay. around three years. And this is where I met Leo, one of the other co-founders uh, of Cycle. And we were working together in a, in a fintech startup in Berlin. And uh, yeah, that's like we, we, we did some parting together. We did some work together and did also some open source stuff together and realized that we worked together quite well. So then, <laughs> okay. then at some point he he asked me whether I want to join Cycle, which he was building for around two years, I think, at the time with the with the third co-founder Quentin. And uh, yeah, okay. I got fascinated by the idea, and then it spiraled down from there with the Stacks Accelerator and uh, yeah, the NFT sale. And uh, yeah, right before the Stacks Accelerator, we all left, all of us left our full-time jobs to pursue the dream of uh, bu building something in, a, in uh, of our own and uh, yeah here, here we are and uh, yeah awesome. how I arrived on Stacks I, I think it mainly ties together with just me arriving on Cycle because uh, before that Leo tried to pitch me Stacks uh, in a couple of uh, couple of parties but uh, it did not work like it did not really stick but when he like talked about Cycle and uh, invited me to join join them then it really kind of started to make sense uh, especially like with the exciting uh, pro proof of transfer and the staking staking thing that uh, st stacks uh, kind of enables and uh, the fact that it's tied to bitcoin is uh, also something that uh, ma makes the currency more robust and uh, it's, uh, yeah it's just so exciting to, it to be in this creates space. a use case creates a use case for bitcoin right overall because otherwise bitcoin is like simply now an asset but uh, with stacks and other projects such as yourself uh, we make bitcoin usable right yeah, exactly um, I, I think in one, one one of the recent interviews this is what money also said that uh, like stacks has some uh not stacks but just bitcoin has a massive amount of like stored value but nothing built on top while ethereum has also <laughs> ma massive amount of value stored and also massive amount of uh like apps built on top of it so it just yeah. like the potential for building on top of bitcoin is uh, is immense and uh, we are so happy to explore that amazing all right so uh, I, I, I want to ask one stereotypical question, right? Is everyone like, you know, in Latvia into online gaming? Because that's what I hear all the time. You also started with online poker. 
Uh, I mean, I would not, I would not say that everyone is into <laughs> online gaming, but uh, I mean, certainly I have ha have some friends who also did did the same thing and were professional online poker players. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a that's a good interesting stereotype. And uh, if you attribute more to the esports, I would say it's a good thing. But uh, if it's more to the gambling, then uh, it's a little bit more more questionable because uh, g gambling is is a very tricky. Uh, Tricky, tricky career to have. So yeah, not. I, I don't think it's about gambling, but from what I understand, Latvia is the capital for online uh, gambling sites. So everyone, like every dealer on those sites, is from Latvia. So ah uh, yeah, yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is true because we have like right. three of the bigger uh, uh, kind of three of the bigger uh, operations are like having yeah. massive offices here. So. Yeah. Anyways, awesome. <laughs> that's a fun, I mean <laughs> yeah. that's a fun fun, that's... fun topic to talk about. But uh, let's let's get back. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so let's talk about Saigon, right? Um, tell us, uh, tell us before we talk about the fundraise and stacks and just just give us an overview of the product. As w if I have to go to Saigon right now, what can I do on it, and how can I earn from it? How does it work? All right. So it's a big disclaimer that right now the monetization is still not in place, so you mm -hmm. won't be able to earn anything right now. So right now, what okay. you can do is uh, you can publish your blog, and it it will be decentralized, and no one will be able to to take it down. So that's a, that's a big benefit. It's like you have complete control over your content. So that's a, that right. that's what you can do right now. But what what we have okay. in mind is, is is building this monetization system around around Bitcoin, where you can write and earn BTC. And uh, it, like what we have in mind is just three different plans, and one would be the right. free plan, where you can write and uh, write kind of like blog type of articles on Cycle platform and uh, still earn money from that. And then the like creator plan would be some something where you pay a little bit of money to get more access to like your uh, your readership stats, uh, get a custom mm -hmm. domain, send out newsletters, and then on top of that we have an idea of an organization plan which would have essentially same as the previous plan but with uh, some user management. So we we really yeah we we really plan to have the tra the transactions between writers and readers would happen peer to peer. But then okay. if you as a writer want to have some sort of like premium features uh, like analytics or uh, custom domains or newsletters, then you can pay an extra fee to kind of increase your, uh, so to say, writing setup. So, uh, right. but but even with the free plan, you will be able to try it out and just uh, monetize your, your blog post on cycle.io, which is, uh, which is kind of, I, I think our dream in a way to enable to give everyone a chance to monetize their content in a completely transparent way. Okay, but I do have to ask, how do you ensure, how do you make this content decentralized? And part two of the question is, what if the content is offensive? Like, how do we get it removed for the community? Okay, so how, first question was, how, how do we make it decentralized? Well, we start yes. it on RV, which is, uh, another blockchain that is for permanent storage and it means that like you can access it but like no one can really remove it so as long as the blockchain is up the content will be up i, I think they ha there was an interesting case where rv this blockchain was mentioned in the in the u.s senate um as as a case i i think it was in in taiwan there was some sort of civil case and then uh yeah, anyway, some newspapers websites were taken down, but since the content online was on Arviv, they were still able to kind of uh, retain the content and uh, wow. and get get the information. So that was uh, huge. And, and I found wow. it particularly interesting that it was mentioned in US Senate, where uh, it is. I would say ge generally people are very, not very, but kind of on the conservative side with when it comes to technology. So that I found uh, <laughs> fascinating. Uh, as you can always see these like uh, crypto startup guys like stand, sitting in front of Senate and explaining what is Bitcoin and, and things like that. And then like the guy out of nowhere just mentioned, uh, how, yeah, the content was saved because it was stored in some cryptocurrency called RV. So that, that's how we plan to uh, ensure the decentralization. And right now we are using the uh, 
storage provided by Stacks. It's called Gaia. It's not on chain, but uh -huh. it's still decentralized. So it's still uh, content still cannot be taken, like removed from the internet. Um, how do we ensure the, um, let's say the offensive content and, and like lack of offensive content and like moderation of that? Uh, well, we can ensure that on the front end, on the platform. So let's say on Cycle, since we're a registered company, we have to ensure that the content is uh, like fits certain rules. Uh, as uh, like in our case, it's in a, like what, whatever the French government rules are because we're registered in France. Uh, but yeah. yeah, and then we can take, take the content offline based on the rules and our policy but we cannot take the content completely offline so it will always stay online but it won't just be displayed on our platform so okay. kinda, our idea is that we will have this underlying blockchain layer where content will always stay online but if it if the content is not friendly to let's say our platform or if someone else builds a platform on top of that uh, on top of the blockchain layer then they can decide what is their content policy. Uh, essentially, we are enabling, yeah, we are enabling kind of like anyone have can have their own content policy. So let's yeah. say in one country, certain ideologies are okay, but not in other one, then it's all right. If you like get like if content gets removed from one platform, you can build your own and relatively sim like the content is still accessible. So it's right. content and never disappears interesting as a creator i can still remove my content right uh, you mean re you cannot remove it from the blockchain so you cannot remove uh, at all no yeah. no you cannot remove yeah. that okay interesting um you have to be this is like you know you have to be careful um as to uh, you know what kind of content you put and you know it has to be checked properly because you don't want to put out information that is uh incorrect right um, from a creator standpoint i would say yeah uh, i mean you can uh, you can update the content if you are the mm -hmm. content creator but uh okay uh, uh oh, but sorry. you cannot remove uh, it yeah yeah you can you cannot remove and actually the updating i i'm pretty i might get this wrong i'm pretty sure yeah sorry i might get this wrong but i'm pretty sure that like whenever you publish a new version it will just publish as a separate and you will have a right. version history so there will always be a record of what was published and what was like the next thing that was published after. So wow, if you make amazing. a small, I could, if you, we could actually yeah. move coin crunch on, uh, on, uh, you know, uh, single and a uh, cycle and it will be fun. Right. Uh, yeah. we cannot change anything. Yeah. That would certainly be certainly be on awesome. If you, if you move the, your newsletter, but I, I mean, Right now, we're still in the building process, so we just need to talk about oh, yeah, whether exactly. that makes sense uh, for you to move all together. But uh, yeah, we would love, love no, to Slowly, have you. steadily, we can. But it's 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 good to have you here um, as, as, and you know talk about this while you are building it, um, rather than talking to you after it has been built. Right. So now I can I have so many questions and I will ask them. But uh, let's also talk about how people are going to earn uh, Bitcoin, you know, on their content. How does that monetization work? Okay, so for, for this, we are leveraging the stacks, uh, stacking mechanics. Uh, pro probably your audience is already kind of like all yeah. are more or less familiar with the, with how things work with stacking. As uh, like yes. the earnings are coming in Bitcoin if you, if you stack your stacks and uh yes. that that's how we intend it to be so as a reader you would stake you would stack certain amount of stacks and the yield would go to writer so that that way oh. you would you would read for free as a reader you would just like your mm -hmm. funds would be locked and the yield would go to the writer and then once this stacking uh, cycle is over then uh, yeah the funds would be like returned to you back and the yield would go to writer and that's how we envision a, a very kind of uh, unique, unique economical model where you would just like yeah. pay by locking your funds and writer would still earn funds as well. Yeah, this is amazing because your subscription fees are technically just stacking stacks, right? That's your subscription uh, requirement. And then yeah. the rewards are given to the, to the author. 
uh, yeah great i i love the idea um okay let's talk about um, stacks accelerator and uh, how how did you get into it and what was it like and also i am very curious to know how did you do your fundraise with nfts okay yeah let's start with the stacks accelerator so uh i mentioned briefly before that we started started to like leon invited me last uh, last spring around last spring he invited me to to join cycle and at that point there was no accelerator announcement yet and we were just like kind of bre- call, having weekly calls and brainstorming how we can work on cycle and uh, right. yeah at some point they announced the accelerator and we were like extremely hyped about the whole hoping and just like and we're thinking and like we knew that we have to apply and uh so so we did and then uh, i think it was two rounds of interviews with uh, trevor uh, alex uh, grace and uh, i not sure m- might not recall who else was there at some point but uh okay. yeah, it was two like, two rounds of interviews and then uh, we were lucky to get in um i i think what was definitely helpful that leo and quentin they have been og builders on uh, stacks community yeah. for um, i would say around 2 years before so uh yeah that's that, that's how we kind of got in and then from there it was uh, really exciting mentoring sessions basically yeah every every other day and uh, the kind of mentors and the stack the stack accelerator uh, um folks connected us with with various investors and uh, and uh, yeah it was wow. all around fun and also building together with teams like uh, Arcadico and uh, uh, Alex Go and uh, there were ma- many teams that I am sure I might miss some but uh, yeah it was all a mix of we, we had we had uh, Chiente here last week uh, right from Alex Go yeah. it was such a fun conversation with her uh and now we have you i uh, i we are thoroughly loving you know stack ecosystem coming to coin crunch and talking to us about what you are building <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's awesome to see other teams trying too and uh, actually what what we are doing is uh, we are for the next batch of accelerator we are helping the teams that are coming up with the like uh, have, giving them some tips about how to do like uh, pitching and things like that because we have been through it <laughs> and um, yeah yeah i i guess pitching is a great segue uh, to bring us to the nft uh, how we raise funds we and yes. because we did i'm not sure how how many but it might be around like 50 different calls with various in- types of investors throughout oh, wow. the summer and okay. uh, we had various success and some medium sized investors were were ready to commit but we did not succeed with finding one bigger investor who would do all the due diligence and and such so what what we ultimately thought of is just uh, let's give the nft sale a, a go as a fundraising mechanism for two or three months and then if it does not work out we can always return to the to the vc route and just uh, push push that kind of um uh pass and uh yeah it uh, fortunately turned out to be quite successful as we managed to raise uh, around half, half a million dollars via via the NFT sales and uh, wow. with the, without immediately giving away any equity which is also a pretty important point because we right, right now we can decide the direction that company is going uh, mostly by ourselves um of course the the you can say that like the the thing that we have to do right now is just we need to maintain the nft project not even only maintain but also build on top of it which we are uh, actively doing um so yeah that's the that's that's the kind of thing that when when you raise money via vcs you would be responsible to the vcs right now we are responsible yeah. to our uh, our community who bought in bought in the project and uh, and uh, yeah have to build build in two fronts the nft side of things and also the platform side of things which uh, has been quite a challenge but uh, i think overall we are we are doing pretty well okay awesome what is the artist what does the road map look like like uh, what can we expect in this year um you know at cycle yeah for cycle the the biggest features uh, i would say the biggest near near term feature is the hero wallet integration which would uh, enable anyone to log in with their wallet and kind of use 
this use our writing platform uh, with an account that is tied to your wallet. And that has right. been something that we have been uh, working and pushing Stacks as well to kind of innovate on their hero wallet to enable this kind of behavior for our specifically for our platform. Um, because that has been, I would say, a big hurdle for onboarding more people. Uh, using the right. Blockstack le legacy ID is something that uh, is, is it's it's very very tedious and it's something that we do not not want to force on our uh, users. And yeah. then after that, we have several big big uh, big releases in mind with the analytics monetization discover page, uh, which we do not have now. And uh, yeah, so lo lots of lots of big 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 plans uh, this year, and I think. Q2 and Q3 is going to be the, the biggest months for, for Cycle in terms of what we release. And uh, yeah, just uh, getting out the premium features. And also something that I did not mention before was that uh, uh, if you are a holder of uh, Explorer Guild NFT, you will have access to the premium features for, for life. So, wow. I, I mean, as long as you hold the uh, NFT. So that's something that right. we wanted to do with our NFT project. Uh, we wanted to have it, of course, the market, like the tradability aspect and uh, like good art and like pro properly secured on, on blockchain. But also one important thing for us was to give some sort of uh, clear utility in within the platform and tie both projects together. So that's also another benefit of holding the holding the Explorer Guild NFT. You will be able to test, test the features uh, for for free. Amazing. Wow, yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I said yar, which is a Hindi word for dude, right, sir? So, um, okay. <laughs> sorry. You, yeah. So do you do you have any Indians on the team? Which brings me to that question. Yeah. Uh, no, we do not have. We are currently just okay. four of us. Okay. Currently oh, it's just, just the four of you. Uh, you've not yeah, even yeah. hired any other employees yet. Okay. No, we have right. hired. Like to, we have hired one full-time engineer and one part-time community manager. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, I think that. Uh, what do you think about the? Have you ever been here? What do you think about the talent in India? You know, uh, with regards to crypto and uh, building on top of blockchain. Um, I, I think it's evolving. I, I think in within the Stacks community, I might have missed some some, but uh, we, with Wilson, we are uh, we are uh pr pretty good i would say uh pretty good bodies you can say that but because always we support support each other and we yeah. were part of the same uh, uh same stacks accelerator and uh was was great to know him and then also in my previous company i had multiple colleagues uh, from india and was always uh, ha having good fun with them and was always impressed by the attention to the detail when it was coming to the like coding tasks and uh nothing nothing but the best nothing but the best to say and uh, uh thank yeah. you so much um uh, uh tell us uh, okay i think that all the questions that i had around the platform i've asked you but is there anything that i missed would, that you would like to share um one thing from the nft side of things is highly i highly suggest everyone goes and checks uh, the museum of the explorer guild so that's something okay. that's uh, a uh, very uh, virtually Im immersive experience where you can see the the NFTs that uh, we ended up burning. So oh, just wow. to not go not not go into very much detail, but uh, we have had an intention of having this collection, sorry, to be bigger. But then the market response was that like uh, we were like seeing that we won't be able to se sell out all the ten thousand. So. We did a community vote, and community voted that the seven thousand should be burned, and that's what wow. we did. And for the burned ones, they are not gone completely, but they are visible in this uh, uh, Explorer Guild, in this uh, museum. Explorer Guild. Io uh, domain. We leave and, the uh, leave leave the link in the description so people can check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, I highly suggest that uh, because we co collaborated with an. Uh, awesome 3D 3D artist who helped us to create this experience with sound and just this uh, amazing wow. environment uh, that's that's built from scratch. So uh, that, that's something I, I like to share. And uh, then I guess apart from that, I'm really happy to be part of the Stacks community and like seeing everyone 
being so supportive around uh, our project and other projects as well. It just seems like everyone wants to lift uh, everyone up. So yeah. All right. So I'm going to summarize a little bit. Um, Cycle is a platform where people can write, uh, create content, write blogs. Uh, the blogs will be decentralized, um, so the the content that you put out is going to be there on the blockchain on Wave blockchain. Uh, obviously, Cycle is a layer on top of it, so anybody who wants to build another layer on top of this content, they can too, uh, right? And uh, people who choose to, you know, uh, take up, uh, you know, reward the readers. Uh, they they are essentially going to stack their stacks stack token and whatever rewards that they earn will be automatically sent to the authors of the articles that these guys are reading um, and uh, there will be three types of plans for the creators there will be a free plan there will be a premium plan and there will be a corporate plan um, so I am personally very excited to try out Cycle and we, we're gonna start writing a couple of blogs and then see where we go from there um, yeah. and uh, the most unique part about the conversation was also you guys being successfully able to raise half a million dollars from NFT sales uh, for building this project. And would you say that this is a viable option for others as well? Do you would you recommend others to do this? Um, yeah, I, I guess one more thing to add that for the monetization, we we will have also a, the more traditional subscription model. So if you do not want to stack on someone, you can also do the like yeah. five stacks a month subscription or whatever uh, amount you wish to. So it's just kind of something that's more already familiar in the industry where you uh, just have this traditional uh, traditional single kind of subscription payment. Uh, then nice. getting back, awesome. getting 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 back to the second question. Uh, well, it depends on what the business is, because the more social aspect is in the within the business, the more it makes sense uh, potentially to do the NFT sale and then kind of like tie some sort of utility to the to the project afterwards. Uh, so, awesome. so yeah, yeah. That, that's that that I would say is kind of my uh, my my answer around it because it, it highly depends on what what the business is uh, for the. But if it's, it's it's if it's it is supposed to have a network effect, it is is supposed to have a community angle to it. Then it's nice to have an NFT uh, there, right? For to raise yeah, that. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like uh, I, I would say for some like some some a business that repairs cars, it it is very hard to imagine like how <laughs> you can do like this social kind of utility aspect. But I mean, still probably there is some, and we will see some something sure like that. Is. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, but uh, some, for something someone like us, where like we naturally have this community of writers, and it just makes uh, makes like it naturally makes sense to to do that, and it worked out nice. really well for us, and it kind of expanded the network of writers and interest about the the whole community aspect of the product. So it, the Amazing. answer is in the, it depends. But if your uh, business is centered around the community and you have some sort of uh, yeah community base then it makes sense all right awesome thank you so much arthurs for uh, coming to pine crunch and sharing the insights about cycle all the best you know for your roadmap and uh, i would look forward to you know uh, writing on top of cycle my personal newsletters maybe and then coin crunch as well um all the best and thank you thank you so much for joining yeah. thanks for having me and sorry for the lighting that in the background <laughs> We'll right. figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> all right. For all the all people right. watching, this was Arthur. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Please subscribe to the channel and li share, like the video if you did, and share the video with others. And all the links that we mentioned, even the Explorer's Guide Museum, uh, Cycle, um, Stacks, all the links are in the description. So please do check it out. And uh, again, Arthur, all the best. Yeah. Bye. Bye.